Ready? I'm Greg. I'm Steve. And this is Betty. Isn't the cat's life terrible? <laughs> another week here on The Den. So this week, we're going to debate and discuss what we think are top five places that we've visited so far in the villager. Perfect way to summarize this topic. <laughs> there you yeah. go. Okay. So, all right. So, way to your, in your opinion, what are some of the pros and cons of some of the places that we've visited? Well, the village itself, like, I could definitely tell it used to have a lot more life, but there's still, like, a whole lot of stuff that's still happening, which is fantastic. Absolutely. Um, one of the first places I want to put on my list for one of my favorite spots in the village is the Bear Second Cup. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. It's a really fun spot where you can hang out with, like, <coughs> you can meet some of the older gays who are a bit more wise, have a lot more stories, sure. and to throw a whole lot more shade than the young kids can throw right now. <laughs> and it's just like, kind of fun, like, sit on the patio and just kind of people watch from there as well. And what would you... Uh, oh. Except for I have a con about that place. I was going to say, what, what's our con? I know what the con is. They don't know how to make their own drinks. <laughs> okay, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say they don't know how to make their own drinks. <laughs> but they, we, we, we were like four for four. Every time we go in there, our drinks have been messed up. So. So, yeah, uh, I'll have so, iced coffee. What? The, the atmosphere is <laughs> great, but uh, the... You know, the service is a little bit lacking, but, but it's a really fun spot. It is a fun spot. The older bears hang out there, and usually because they're cruising to the sea, who's going into Steamworks, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But you know, no it's a fun spot, and there's been there's <coughs> good people that hang out there. Cool. I have one I want to submit uh -huh. uh, for consideration: the Korean fried chicken restaurant Dak Gogi. Dak yes. Gogi. Oh yeah. Which is directly across the street from the Wellesley subway station. Well. Pretty much directly across the street. And the pros are the chicken is friggin' delicious. It was delicious. And I'm not even usually a fan of that kind of thing, but it was It, it was, was good. good. And the fries, the fries. Oh, the fries were amazing. Were like also the fries. Oh, well, whatever that spicy uh, rice noodle thing that we had. Yeah, is yeah. delicious. I can't remember the name. So the food we found was amazing. The Ooh. major con is like, it very obviously used to be a dance club. And like, <laughs> They haven't really changed it at all, so like, you head in, it looks like a bar, you go upstairs, and there's like literally a dance floor, and like the club music, it, the bass is just Oh pounding. yeah, like, eating fried chicken while just like rocking out to like hard remixes of Kendrick Lamar and Notorious B.I.G. And you have to yell over the music. <laughs> 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 what did you order? What? Well, I've got this loyalty, got loyalty inside my DNA. <laughs> Man, that chicken is good though. <laughs> Except for that uh, big family of pigeons outside of the restaurant. Oh god. <laughs> Um, mine, I would say, my first one will be, um, the Church Mouse in the Perkin. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah, oh, you big fan of the Perkin? Perkin? I do. I, I do like the Church Church Mouse. It's, uh, kind of, it's a British pub. Um, so very British pub fare on the menu, um, usually good drink specials. Um, I particularly like their bangers and mash, because <laughs> I'm a basic person. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> What would I say the con is to that place? You know, I, I, I can't really think of an actual con of the really? place. Really? So yeah. it's perfect. Well, it's not perfect, obviously. <coughs> so, so, I don't know, it's just like, it's pretty standard pub food. Yeah, maybe maybe like, it's a, maybe it's a little too basic. There you go. Right. It's a little basic, but that's food. a good point. That's it's a nice point. atmosphere, though. I do enjoy going, I do enjoy hanging out there. Mm -hmm. Well, every time I've gone, I've ordered the Buffalo Wings Poutine. Yeah, I've ordered something pretty much different every time, except I've gone back to the uh, Bankers and Ash a few times. Yeah. yeah. So we talked about the second cup, that gogi, uh, and the uh, Fergan. Our neighbors in our sober here. I want to also bring up and remind you of Tokyo Grill. Oh, yeah. Which is a nice little Japanese place, but it's not sushi. And pros are like the food is like affordable and delicious. Mm -hmm. um, the cons are there is limited seating available. It's like really small. oh my god! It's but that's still some of the best Japanese food I've had. There you go. Ever. And it was like despite like, <coughs> like if you had to sit way in the back, kind of like by the fridges and whatnot, but it was still like worth it. And was, the the price is right too. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dead Dog Records. Oh. Um, I'm a big record collector, but the only thing I'm looking for is albums that are like very important to my youth. 
And I had the gayest find the other day. He just wanted a reason to show the record. Yes, I do. <laughs> so, yeah, gayest thing I could possibly find. But what's gayer than this? It's a this. <laughs> pink vinyl. Pink vinyl. But well, they have an amazing selection there, and the prices are the prices right. It's like I loved Taz back home, but I don't know. I just find this place is just a little easier to navigate. Well, if we're not gonna include places that aren't restaurants, obviously the men's room is one of my favorites. Um, yeah. It's a unique shop that is upstairs from one of the bars, and they have a barber shop with excellent hairdressers that do my hair, and I love them. And they also sell like sex stuff. <laughs> They have like um, fetish gear, leather, fetish, but it's not just that. They also got like beard oils. Oh, they, 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 yeah. they have like personal lubricants right next to the beard oil, right next to uh, the like uh, skin lotion and stuff like yeah. that. It's just a crazy mix. And then they have like leather gear, but they also have like Brooklyn Heights T-shirts yeah. and awesome stuff like that. The staff and there. fans that say woof on them. <laughs> and the staff there are so much fun. Like all the fans I found the other day that said, and, and it, really, it literally said, and every kiss begins with K. Nice. <laughs> I wanted to say that like, the staff at the men's room are amazing. They are so much fun. There's Ooh. so much conversation just flowing there. You can tell they love their jobs, and I really enjoyed just hanging out and just kind of checking. And if you, and if you need an, a personal opinion about how something looks, though, they're not afraid to give it to you. So yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. So what's the con? There is no con. Oh always. no, there's got to be a con. Uh, con number one is like a lot of the stuff doesn't fit me because like You're they don't carry that. huge sizes. Like they usually go up to like an XL maybe, but that's still too small for me. Uh, I can't really blame them for that, but it does make shopping there a bit of a pain for me. Yeah. But also, it's upstairs. Boo stairs. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Staying along those lines, I'm going to say out in the street. Such a great store. Yeah. Though. So it's a it's a three layered store, um, much like men's room. They basically <laughs> carry everything you could think of, like that. They have cute underwear. They have sex toys, they have they have fetish gear, they have bathing suits, sunglasses, like shoes, like they have basically everything you could think of that you ever want for gay apparel. It's a three floor, floor store, um, which also has an online component, so this is where Derek will post down below the link to yes. the online store. Right here. Um, um, so it, it, and it's, all the staff is fully uh, Gay and queer staff, so it, it's fantastic. It supports the community. Um, what would I I'd say? The drawback is, I, I mean, much like the men's room, I would say you probably found the same thing that they didn't carry bigger boy sizes. I mean, <laughs> stuff true. above XL was uh, was kind of lacking. So when we when we all went, they, he, he was having a hard time buying stuff. So. I would say that's the same drawback. I, I again probably common in the in the industry, but yeah. What else? Stronco Manor was fun. Oh yeah. yeah. Now this place though, there's like I, the pros are the atmosphere, the novelty of it, <coughs> the gaming, the trivia was a lot of fun. The con though, the prices. The prices and, and the food quality. The food, the food was quality. was I wouldn't say subpar, but the food was like. Just basic average. It wasn't like restaurant food. It was no. like someone's dad in the kitchen food. I don't mind paying those prices if you're getting really good food, but it was just kind of like, eh. But if you really like nerd culture, sci-fi mm -hmm. culture, and you really just want to have a fun, kitschy time with a lot of like references, it's a really fun spot <coughs> to hang out. Like there's a room for Alien. There's a room for Blade Runner. There's like Hell and whatnot, like different bars, and it's really fun. Okay. Yeah, the uh, the bubble tea place. There's a bubble tea place that's like just on the outskirts of the village. Uh, it's uh, Derek hasn't heard of the list yet. He's already young. He's told me about young this place. and what's the street up from Wellesley? Gloucester, wasn't it? Gloucester. Yeah, but uh, on the west side. And anyways, it's called the Alley. The you wouldn't know that it's a bubble tea shop because it has a picture of like a deer on it. You go inside and they have 
like really good. And it's really good. Tea. I would recommend the Dirioka, which is what I got, and it was fantastic. Drawback? Uh, the, so the pros are amazing bubble tea, uh, like top tier, that you can't normally find. Drawback, I would probably say, is like, it's a little expensive. I think for our two yeah. medium bubble teas, it came out to 12 bucks. Yeah, they were six dollars a piece of solid. Yeah. yeah. Um, but man, if you're ever like hankering for some real bubble tea, that's the place to go. Mm -hmm. um, so we got a couple of places that are pretty much right next door to us. And, hold on, and bonus, we cannot omit Olympic 76 pizza. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Oh my god, so this has become like where the bears recommend you go to eat yeah. or they want to take you to eat. Just like you can go there and get the biggest freaking panzerotti yeah. and with the meat sauce all over it, whatever toppings, you, whatever fillings you want inside, and it's like $13. Yeah, yeah it's really good. Huge portion sizes, good prices. Downsides. Um, I, I would say if I were to say there's a downside, it's the, the atmosphere is a little dated. Yeah. No, I think that adds to the charm. Do you think? I think that adds to the charm. I, I don't agree. There is no concept. I think, I think, I think, I think it's a need for a bit of an upgrade. You can still have the old style look, but not look old. You know what I mean? I don't know. I think it adds to the charm of the place. Well, we, I guess we'll I give it a toot. We will agree to disagree on this one. What's your con then for it? I don't have any cons for it. It's just like, it's great food, it's great prices. It, it, it gets a toot. Alright, um, um, so the two places that are close to us that we probably have visited the most are O'Grady's, which is directly next door to us. You want a good cheap brunch? I'm going for the week, 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock, yep. $6? They start serving, so the bar opens at 9 a.m. They start serving uh, brunch at 9 a.m. Uh, uh, every day of the week. Um, they, on weekdays they have like a cheap $6 brunch, which is awesome. Uh, I feel like right now they don't serve drinks till 11, but I feel like given the recent legislation that will probably change in the next coming weeks, because um, they're passing a law where Toronto bars can start serving up at 9 a.m. So you'll probably see that they'll start serving drinks at 9 a.m. because right now it's on the menu 11. But um, and they they also have they have a bear night that uh, gets hosted at the lodge uh, on Friday nights. So that's good. Um, they have a nice patio. So those would be all the pros. Um, <laughs> what, what would you say the cons are? I think I know. What, what say it. I think that the, the, the only problem I can see with this is the bear nights on Friday night. So tonight, don't get me wrong, it's a nice little get together. But the upstairs where they hold the bear nights is very cramped. Um, apparently they used to help the patio, but now it's upstairs. And I just personally found it was a little cramped. You couldn't really do anything other than socialize, like you couldn't dance. <coughs> so, and for that. what's then, the other one? The bathroom one. Oh my god! The tiny bathroom. The, the tiny bathroom. They have one bathroom that literally your knees are at your chest when you're pooing. Like, <laughs> and, it's, and that's me, and I'm not like... A huge. <laughs> I couldn't even imagine what Steve looks like on that fucking toilet. Pivot. <laughs> pivot, pivot, pivot. No good. Pivot. And I would say, well, one. Uh, actually, we'll, we got two more. Okay. So we'll say, uh, let's go with. Uh, well, I mean, the Black Eagle is is a common stop for us. Um, we usually, go, they they kind of hold events all, all week long, and you know, people get a idea of what a place is like. And when you hear about the Black Eagle, you automatically think that it's one thing but it's not just that like they have you gotta say what thing because nobody's gonna know what you're talking about oh i think everyone yeah. knows what leather the... sex club okay there let's say there, there you said vander sex yes <laughs> so kind of skeezy uh, yeah. it kind of get and i mean because there's so many black eagles around the world they they kind of get that you know that image but it's i'm sure there, there's definitely elements of that but I mean, they hold a lot of other things. Like, for instance, we go weekly usually for drag race nights. Mm -hmm. um, the Sunday barbecue. Uh, they have the first Sunday barbecue today, which we just got back from, which was nice. It was a nice little get together. Um, so yeah, they, and they have they have regular dances and stuff that mm -hmm. aren't too crazy. Aren't too crazy. Like there's moments there. If you want to get crazy, you can get crazy. 
There's moments there if you want to just chill and have drinks with your community, you can do yeah. that. Yeah, it's yeah. True. No, that's absolutely true. Yeah. That's absolutely true. And you, if you go from day to day, the the, the the clientele can be very different from day to day, which is which is nice as well. Um, so the pros are. I I would say the the pros are the the differences in the clientele that visit the place. I like that you kind of get a little bit of everything. And the cons are that because. You get so many different kinds of groups. Sometimes you you can kind of feel left out. <laughs> fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. If there's one more spot I want to put in. Glad day. Oh oh yeah! I forgot about glad day. I was gonna say the garage too. Wow, we got so many. How are we gonna okay. go that fun? So glad day and garage. Glad day is a bookstore. It's the oldest LGBT bookstore in North America, and they hold dances. It's uh, seminars. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And the throw in the garage, garage is a, is a drag bar, which it looks like a garage. Yeah, and, and they uh, and they have <laughs> and they have regular karaoke nights. Um, yeah, so it, it's a, it's a good, got a good atmosphere. And pretty much any time you walk by there, there's a drag performance. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You know, they'll open up the garage doors and some drag people come out the garage door. Yeah, on the front of the building. Yeah, yeah. So that's it's kind of cool. Sorry to make those ones quick, but it's a long video already. It is a long video. Okay. So now we have I think what we should do is pause the video here. Yeah. And then go get a piece of paper and like vote on which ones are our top five. Yeah. And then come back with our conclusions. All right. Cool. So we will be back. We'll be uh, blah 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 blah. Okay. All right. After careful deliberation of the judges. Yes. We have come <laughs> to with a top to a top five. All right. Coming in at number five. Miss Vanji. <laughs> the illustrious <laughs> O'Grady's. Yes. We love the bear night. Congratulations, O'Grady's. We love Yay. the brunch. Uh, we love the proximity of it being next door to our Yeah, absolutely. Really. I think that I think that that plays a part in making the top five. It's literally it? next to us. <laughs> Coming in at number four is the Black Eagle Toronto. Yay, Black That's Eagle! Literally across the street from us. <laughs> I can see it from the patio. <laughs> Coming in at number three is Olympic Seventy Six Pizza. Not yes. surprised. Yes. Try the Panzerati. Try the Panzerati and make sure you add the meat sauce. Get the meat sauce. Coming in at number two is Glad Day Bookstore. Yes. There was some debate between the two and one, but... I, don't know, I think the historical factor of what it offers to the community puts it where it is. And coming in at our number one best place in Toronto is the men's room. Yes! Get your hairs did. You will be grateful that you did it. And then buy yourself a puppy mask. Yeah, yeah. Get a haircut covered with a puppy mask. <laughs> and then go down, and then go to the, the bar downstairs and have a drink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So that was our best of the Toronto Village. Mm -hmm. So. And and don't and if you're watching this video and you're a business in the village, and we didn't list you, we're sorry. We've only been here seven weeks. We haven't had a chance to check every place, <laughs> but we will. Yeah. And, and, and if you're good, and if you're good, we'll we'll put you in one of our future videos. <laughs> So, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Give us, <laughs> give us free stuff. Promotion. <laughs> teasing, teasing. All right, so I guess I'll wrap that up. All right, as, oh, well, uh, one last announcement before I wrap things up. Um, tune in next Tuesday because we're gonna have one of our um, candidates for that is possibly gonna be one of our new Den members posting a video next Tuesday. So be on the watch out for that. I'm not gonna say the name yet. I'm gonna leave that in suspense till next Monday. But uh, yeah, tune in next Tuesday to see mystery his, guest. his mystery guest slash audition video. Cool. All, All right. right. As always, like, share, subscribe. Tune in to the rest of the guys' videos this week. Um, but everyone, have yourselves a wonderful week. Bye. <laughs>